Neptune is rarely a topic of discussion when considering our solar system. We tend to focus on the enormous Jupiter or the gorgeous rings of Saturn the most, don't we? Well, recently scientists have turned their focus onto Neptune after coming across something very strange. Neptune is extremely unusual compared to Earth. We don't really know much about this far-off world compared to some of the other planets. But based on the information we have gleaned in its relatively recent discovery, Neptune is not what we think it is. What do we know and don't know about this furthest neighbor to our planet? And why are scientists completely shocked after this most recent discovery? Let's find out. The planet that is farthest from the Sun is Neptune. It is approximately 30 times farther away from Earth. Neptune's temperature is typically minus 200 degrees Celsius. It is the only planet that we cannot view from Earth without the aid of a telescope since it is so far away. The planet's width is around four times that of the Earth. Additionally, it tilts on its axis by a similar degree to how the Earth does. As a result, Neptune has seasons just like our planet does, although they endure far longer. Before it was ever discovered, Neptune's existence was anticipated. The nearby planet Uranus seemed to have an odd orbit, which astronomers discovered. It appeared as though another planet was pulling Uranus. Mathematical calculations by scientists led to the planet's discovery in 1846. Since its discovery, it has only made one full orbit, which takes 165 years to complete because it is so far from the Sun. There are 14 known moons of Neptune, the largest is known as Triton. Compared to the other moons that orbit Neptune, it is substantially larger. It emits freezing liquid from its surface, much like geysers on Earth, and has its own atmosphere. Voyager 2 was the only spacecraft to travel to Neptune in 1989. This implies that we still have a lot to learn about the planet. What, for instance, gives it such a vivid blue hue? The planet is covered in a thick layer of gases, much like other gas giants, although Neptune is also referred to as an ice giant like Uranus. Many people seem to think that the planet's exceptionally deep blue color may be because it has a lot of potential water, either in the form of ice or otherwise. Tragically, this is not the case. Although it is thought that the planet has water, the blue tint is actually a result of the methane in Neptune's atmosphere. Neptune's atmosphere is composed, as best we can tell from data gathered from spacecraft like Voyager 2, of around 74% hydrogen, 25% helium, and 1% methane and other small components. There are some clouds on Neptune as well. In the far reaches of the atmosphere, these are mostly composed of frozen methane particles, along with other minor gases. In actuality, it is these ice methane particles that give Neptune its distinctively deep blue hue. Neptune may be distinguished from Uranus by both its startling blue color and its white characteristics. Neptune's atmosphere is segmented into several layers, just like the atmospheres of other giant gas planets. These are, roughly speaking, the lower troposphere and stratosphere, with the troposphere acting as their boundary. As might be expected, Neptune's lower troposphere cools with height, yet in the higher stratosphere, temperatures seem to warm up as one ascends. This is really strange. The whole upper atmosphere of Neptune is covered in smog made of hydrocarbons, and due to the planet's high pressure, hydrocarbon snowflakes that form in the atmosphere melt before they reach the surface. So, as we mentioned, it is a really peculiar environment. Neptune's atmosphere is already unusual, but it really gets a little stranger. A large dark area was detected in the planet's southern hemisphere by NASA's Voyager 2 probe when it sailed by the planet in 1989. It was shortly discovered through further analysis of the data that the probe had collected about it, that it was some sort of huge rotating storm system. It was also enormous, roughly the size of the entire planet. It's known as the Great Dark Spot of Neptune. Similar to Jupiter's Great Spot, Neptune's spot included extremely swift winds that may reach speeds of up to 1,500 miles per hour, 2,414 kph. In fact, these winds are the fastest of their sort that we have ever observed on any planet. Data also showed that during the brief time that Voyager 2 had contact with the planet, the so-called Great Dark Spot appeared to change significantly in size. Although the source of the energy for these storms has not yet been identified, considering the distance between Neptune and the Sun, it is unlikely to be sunlight. Scientists are still absolutely baffled as to what caused such powerful winds even now. 
but the tale behind the location becomes much more odd. The Great Dark Spot was found to have totally disappeared when Neptune was directly viewed by the Hubble Space Telescope. Since then, Hubble has been watching Neptune extremely carefully and has been able to determine that these spots appear and disappear roughly every two years. Surprisingly, there is more than one large dark spot on Neptune. There is a second dark spot, and according to scientists, this must have separated from the main storm. Unbelievably, Neptune also owns a pair of rings. They are nonetheless quite attractive in their own right, even though they are not nearly as striking as those of the planet Saturn. The rings were only identified by astronomers in the middle of the 1980s due to their extreme faintness. Patrice Boucher, a researcher for the European Southern Observatory in La Silla, Chile, made the find. Later in the decade, the NASA Voyager 2 mission took pictures that were closer and more precise. Neptune's rings are generally comparable to the less dense regions of Saturn's major rings, such as the Cassini division and Saturn's C ring, even when they are at their densest. Although a large portion of Neptune's ring system is weak, dim and dusty, it more closely resembles Jupiter's rings. The names of the rings are tributes to the astronomers who made significant contributions to our knowledge of the planet. Therefore, the rings are referred to as Gal, Le Verrier, Lasselle, Arago and Adams as they move away from the planet. Additionally, there is another unidentified ring whose orbit nearly matches that of Galatea, one of Neptune's moons. These rings may be quite fleeting and are believed to be a relatively recent addition to the planet, according to astronomers. However, it should be noted that the ring system of Neptune also contains strange dust clusters known as arcs. The four most noticeable arcs are found in the outermost ring, Adams, and are referred to as Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité and Courage. The arcs are odd because according to the principles of motion, they should have dispersed equally instead of remaining grouped together. Galatea's gravitational influences, according to scientists, are likely what stabilize these arcs. The only thing we currently know about the rings is that they look to be formed of a very dark substance. Although it has been suggested that they may actually be constituted of highly concentrated organic chemicals that have formed as a result of prolonged exposure to sunlight, scientists are not exactly clear what they are made of. With the ghostly rings encircling it, Neptune appears to Webb to be more like a shining crystal ball than it does in the Voyager photos. This is so that the telescope can view the near-infrared spectrum, which is reflected by clouds located high in the planet's atmosphere. Early observations from Earth-based observatories had revealed that Neptune's rings were not real rings that circled the planet completely, but rather partial arcs. It took Voyager 12 years to reach Neptune and only once did it see its rings. Since then, no spacecraft has visited the planet. However, given that the James Webb Telescope can see them clearly at any time, we can keep an eye on them for as long as the telescope is anticipated to last, which might be up to two decades, to see how those enigmatic rings change. Moving forward, the planet's unusual storm systems and atmospheric circumstances have already been discussed, but things only seem to become crazier. The stratosphere of the Earth has cooled over nearly two decades, but experts are baffled as to why. The most distant planet in our solar system is unpredictably cooling down, according to a recent analysis of over 20 years' worth of thermal infrared measurements. Scientists aren't completely sure why this is happening. Similar to Earth, Neptune experiences seasonal fluctuations as a result of its axial tilt. However, the seasons on the planet are much longer than those on Earth because of how far away it is from the Sun. Each season lasts around 40 years because Neptune's orbit takes 165 Earth years to complete. An international team of researchers examined thermal infrared data gathered by both Earth and space-based observatories, such as the Spitzer Space Telescope, which NASA terminated operations for in January 2020, and the Very Large Telescope and Gemini South Telescope of Chile's European Southern Observatory. The temperature of Neptune's stratosphere decreased by almost 14 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the data, which were gathered between 2003 and 2018. It was surprising that detectable temperature changes could occur in the planet's atmosphere in such a brief amount of time, nearly half a season. The group also found that temperatures at the planet's poles were altering. The stratospheric temperatures at Neptune's poles specifically warmed by a surprising 20 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of two years, 2018 to 2020, a startling finding that researchers have never seen before. 
To pinpoint precisely what is driving these unexpected temperature swings, more research is required. The 11-year solar cycle of the Sun, or cyclical variations in the number of sunspots that it produces are two potential causes, according to the researchers. The team's next objective is to use the James Webb Space Telescope to conduct a more thorough analysis of the planet and its enigmatic atmosphere. Is there life on Neptune? To be totally honest, the majority of scientists are not entirely certain whether there is or ever was life on Neptune. The environment is considerably different from Earth-like planets, and the absence of liquid water probably completely eliminates the possibility of life as we know it. Extreme pressures, temperatures and compounds are also present on the planet's surface and atmosphere, making them extremely unfavorable environments for the growth and or survival of simple or complex life. Even if we have never actually seen or researched any kind of real alien life, that doesn't rule it out from being feasible. In reality, a number of different possible ways to live have been suggested. However, there might be some isolated favorable regions where life can scrape out a living. Neptune would require some kind of energy source that life forms could use for their own purposes if we were to discover it there. A liquid water source or some other as yet unknown substance with qualities similar to water would also be necessary for the planet. On Neptune's surface, life would have to be able to endure temperatures as low as 55 Kelvin and liquid water cannot exist at this temperature. However, temperatures do rise to more comfortable levels as you move deeper inside Neptune albeit at the expense of higher pressures. This means that there may very well be a location on the planet where water is still liquid and where life is present. This would most likely lie hundreds of kilometers below the surface and would be hard for us to examine based on what we know about Neptune. We'll only have to guess whether life lives there or not until we create probes that could ever enter and observe these regions of Neptune. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more videos about space.